Christmas morning here in Newport Beach, California, and we just want to wish you a very, very, very Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and welcome to a little Christmas morning uh, retelling of the Christmas story, the story of the best story in the world, the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. So we're going to be telling that story this morning in this brief half an hour, and then we're going to be going over and uh, sharing some gifts with uh, our youngest son and his wife and his little girl. We were with our oldest son and his family last night. And uh, so anyway, we're excited to be here with you all. And again, we're celebrating the best thing that's ever happened in this world, and that is the birth of Jesus Christ. Yeah, the incarnate God. Incarnate meaning that God comes into human flesh. And so that's what we're going to be. We're going to read the story. We're, I'm not going to have a, a message per se today or a sermon. I think the message is in the actual reading and the, and the, and the foretelling of the story of the birth of Jesus. So Don is going to read a few passages. I'm going to read a couple passages. And we're going to tell the story of Jesus Christ. We're not going to tell the the advent of Jesus. We're not going to talk about Elizabeth. We're not going to talk about the prophets. We're going to talk about the actual written accounts that are recorded in the Bible from, from uh, Matthew, Luke, and John. What's interesting, Mark, the gospel of Mark, doesn't start with the birth of Jesus. It starts uh, with the baptism of Jesus. And I have to kind of stop and think that it even start with that. But anyway, we're going to, so there's three counts of the birth of Jesus. In, and so we're going to be addressing those. And uh, that's what we're going to do today. So last night we had a, a service, a, a Christmas Eve service. And it was a beautiful service with lots of beautiful music. And we lit lights to, to candles, we lit candles. We did, and uh, real, we used real candles. Yeah, this year. So, so we did that last night, and uh, anyway, it was a beautiful service. And we started with a song that's one of my favorite. Um, I guess you call it. It's really a worship song, specifically a great worship song for Christmas. So Donna said, why don't you read the words? I said, why don't you read the words? So I printed them out for him yeah, sure. for, and, and listen to these words. They're absolutely beautiful and it's a great melody. And uh, if you want to watch it or see it or listen to it, I always watch my music on YouTube. And so you can go to YouTube and just, uh, go, I guess you, you would search, uh, make room by casting crowns and the video will come up and it's absolutely beautiful read the words and i i look at my music <clears throat> on spotify so the bottom line is if you just go on google and type in your search bar make room by casting crowns and here's the words you need to go and listen to it because the melody is so beautiful but here's what it says a family hiding from the storm found no place at the keeper's door it was for this a child was born, to save a world so cold and hollow. The sleeping town they did not know, that lying in a manger low, a savior king who had no home, has come to heal our sorrows. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story? Shepherds counting sheep at night, do not fear the glory light. You are precious in his sight. God has come to raise the lowly. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write his story? You can come as you are, but it may set you apart when you make room in your heart and trade your dreams for his glory. Make room in your heart. Make room in your heart. Mother holds the prom promise tight. Every wrong will be made right. The road is straight, the burdens light. For in his hands, he holds tomorrow. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? For God to write his story. You can come as you are, but it may set you apart when you make room in your heart. 
and trade your dreams for his glory. Make room in your heart. Make room in your heart. Make room in your heart. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time we can gather together on Christmas morning. <clears throat> so we thank you for the fact that you came into the world that we might have life and light. So, oh Lord, speak to our hearts, speak to our souls, and may we glorify you today, tomorrow, and always. So we're going to read the Christmas story, and I'm going to start actually with the fourth gospel, which is in the Gospel of John. And the Gospel of John, the reason I like to start off with that is it's, it's theological. It's not historical, it's theological. And so, so that gives us the, the reality of what's happening with the birth of Jesus. And then we go from there into the actual historical accounts, which we find in Matthew and Luke. So hear these words from the from John chapter 1. This is the way John starts his letter and or his gospel, his good news. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light gives light to everyone. <clears throat> the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of human will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes. That's the way John talks about the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was in the very beginning, was, always has been. He was in the act, he was in the creation story. Remember, God spoke. If God is going to speak, how does one speak? People speak with words. God was the word. Jesus was the word that helped create everything there is. God, Jesus was in the beginning, always has been, always will be. And then it came to a time where, where God decided that he was going to become flesh and dwell among us full of grace and truth. <clears throat> so would you like me to read the next account from Luke 2? Yes, the history. Begins. Luke 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that was a census that should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Gal Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths, and she placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. You know, the, the beauty of, of when we stop and we think about the Christmas story, Jesus could have been born into any kind of situation. He could have been born into, like Moses into the house of Pharaoh or raised in the house of Pharaoh. Uh, he could have been born uh, at that, and in, in, in the time of Jesus, the, the 
the center of power was Rome. He could have been born in Rome, but he was born in this obscure place in, in, a, in a little village in called Bethlehem, House of Bread. And it was there that he was born and they laid him in a manger. You know, people think of a wooden manger like we have in the West, but it's actually, uh, um, it was actually stone. And so they would carve things out of stone because there's lots of stone in Israel and not a lot of wood. And so they made a lot of stuff. Almost everything was made out of stone as a result. So let me read the, the next passage, Luke 2, 8 through 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see these things this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Yeah. When you when you when you think when you hear this and you picture the the shepherds and 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 you imagine these angels, can you imagine being one of those shepherds in the field? No. What comes into your mind when you think such a thing like that? Well, I don't know. It must be, it must have been uh, terrifying in a way. Uh, not. That's what they said. Yeah, exactly. They said that, but uh, mm -hmm. the uncertainty, the feelings of wonder, and trying to figure out what's going on, and confusion. Confusion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, living yeah. in this Roman world. Uh, under the oppression of the Roman government, watching troops march through their through their streets for for decades, and not seeing any end of that at all, and then to have these angels in the <laughs> sky. I mean, it's just uh, imagine it, it's unimaginable, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So then the. The fourth account comes from Matthew, and uh, it's the story of the Magi. So why don't, why don't you read that story? Absolutely. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, and they asked, Where is the one who has been born, King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people. Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and he said to them, go and search carefully for the child. For as soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. 
After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming into the house, they saw the little child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and they worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and they presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So they they knew they were protecting him. They said, <laughs> we're not, no, we're not going to destroy this. This is a miracle. And we know what our ruler is up to. And we're going to, we're going to go back the other way. We're going to avoid this as much as exactly. we can, right? You know, when you don't want to, when you don't want to tell the story, when you don't want to tell people, the best thing is just to avoid them all together. That's just what they get out did. of the way. Yeah, they just got out of the way. I'd imagine, you know, that this is a long journey for them, right? This isn't yeah. like a hawk skipping a jump. They didn't just get. <laughs> We're their talking car and, months, right? Yeah, yeah. We're so, talking months, yeah. yeah. So the and they they came there to to give gifts to Jesus, and that is a that is a symbolism for how we are to respond to the good news of Jesus as well. Uh, God has come into the world to give us salvation, to give us light, and as as a way of saying thank you for all that God has done for us, we give a small percentage back to Him. And so we collect an offering every Sunday morning. The reason we do that is to, to edify your spiritual life. It literally is a spiritual thing that we do when we give. It, it shows that we are uh, we have a faith in God. It shows that we put more trust in God than we do on our finances. It, it makes a difference in the world as we give. And so that's why we give. And so this is a time for us to collect our offerings. And the way we collect our offerings here is we have several ways. You want to explain those, Donna? Sure. You may send a check <clears throat> to Robert Schuler Ministries at 26 Canyon Island Drive in Newport Beach, California, 92660. You probably didn't have time to hear that. So what you need to do is go to the website. That's the easiest drshuler.org. That's D-R-S-C-H-U-L-L-E-R.org. And you'll see a little button that says, I'd like to give. You can give that way. And if you'd prefer to mail it, then if you scroll to the very bottom of the homepage of the website, you'll see the same address I just gave you, 26 Canyon Island Drive, Newport Beach, California, 92660. We are also still collecting Venmo at Robert Schuler Ministries. And some people are still giving that way, although yeah. we're not sure how much longer we'll use Venmo. But we, so we'd prefer it if you'd go to our website, drshuler.org. And I just have to say that there's many people that support this ministry, and we would not be able to do what we do without your support. Uh, we're coming to the end of 2022. So if you'd like to give a year end gift, that is awesome. Another thing, we never mention this, but if you'd like to, make a way for us in your um, will and your estate. There's ways to do that too. So that, you know, in 50 years from now, <laughs> when you, when you pass on to the next life, when you go to live with Jesus forever in heaven or in 25 years when you do that, or if I, only God knows um, that some of your um, estate can go into this ministry. That's another way to give. And um, we appreciate any and everything you can give. We want you to know if you go on our website, you can also look, if you see, you click on the link that says about us, you can see uh, this last year we gave to 19 different nonprofits other than ourselves. We gave in our time, our talents, and our finances. And it's really important to give. So if you're not going to give to this church, please find somewhere to give because when you give something miraculous happens it changes you you see life differently you turn into a person of gratitude instead of a person that is worried about where your next meal is coming from because somehow when you give you just you can't outgive god he gives back to you in amazing ways he doesn't yeah. always bless you financially but often he does 
but he will bless you with relationships, with job opportunities, with, with things that happen to you, miraculous things in the parking lot of a grocery store. You meet up with somebody and that leads you to this, to that, to the other. And it's, it's this effect that's incredible when you turn into a grateful person, a giving person. So again, please give to this ministry if you feel called to do so. If not, give to another ministry, but do it. Make a commitment. Make it a, a, a regular, give on a regular basis. Don't just give once at the end of the year because you feel like you're compelled to do that. You know, God loves um, a person that gives with a grateful heart, not begrudgingly, not because they feel guilty about anything. This isn't about pain of penance. This is about exactly. making yourself a better, more grateful person so that you can step into 2023 and see all the glorious, beautiful, wonderful things that are out there and focus on the good. And we all have hurt. We all have sorrows. We all have negativity, but always focus on the good because there's lots of it. Well, I'm afraid our battery is going to run out any Ooh. time soon. It says it's going to stop. Oh, so I'm going to, I'm just, I'm just going to, I'm That's just going right. to end by saying that last night, what I, what I, the, the story I mentioned, and if I just, uh, go off all of automatically that's because the battery went out and the computer shut down but but and that's okay that's all right but here's the story i, I told i told or the or the the reality i shared was we light a candle and then from that candle i light my candle and as i give my light to other people what happens is my light isn't diminished in any no. way, shape, or form. And people pass their candles and their light to other people. And the light just got greater and greater. And that's the way the love of Jesus is. The light that comes into the world does not diminish if we give our light to others. And that's why we are we are we are called by God to shout it from the mountaintops like the shepherds did. They went and they shared it with everyone. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is yeah. born and shed the light of Jesus, shed the light of, of God with your family, with your members. So we had a family in, in our church service yesterday morning where the, the matriarch, last night, last night, yeah, last night where the matriarch came and she lit the Christ candle and behind her was her family. And there was, I'd say there was probably 20 people standing behind her. And she's her. 90. And it was just so beautiful to mm -hmm. see this family together reading the, the story of love and, uh, and, under, and sharing with us the beauty of Christmas. So with that, I'm going to say Merry Christmas again. I'm going to say goodbye. Have a great day. And uh, we'll see you next week on New Year's Day. We're going to be back here. From Florida. We'll From be in Florida. Florida. <laughs> exactly. So see you on New Year's Day or join us on the Word Network, 9 30 p.m. Eastern Time, thewordnetwork.org. We're on television again. Half an hour program. It will probably be a repeat of what we've just done here, but it always turns out different because we don't have a script. So and, and we you love can, you. And you can download their app uh, right. as well. Thewordnetwork.org. So the word network. Yeah. Or we're on at 9 30 p.m. Eastern time every Sunday night. God loves you, and so do we. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone.